Hey adventurers, welcome to the crew. I'm Sea Lord Janda, and this is my I'd last play to. of Pillars of Eternity. In the last episode, we explored the mines back in uh, Stalwart Village, and we're now headed up to Durkin's Battery to see what's changed since we were last here. So hold on, I had a bunch of reports here. Hmm. Name error. Has a little trouble traveling to Thainball. Good for him. And a quest. Mirren legend holds that Saint Ethan created a miraculous knot that the Faithless could not untie. A daring burglar he recently cleared it, cleaned out the myriad precious relics in the Smith's Hall of Ymirkal. For each treasure once stood, a string was tied, each leading back to an intricate knot in the center of the temple. The burglar left a tantalizing clue in the form of a written prayer to Saint Ethan. The riddle has stumped the locals. Desperate to recover their artifacts, the priests have reached out to mercenaries and adventurers for help. Okay. Um. Actually, that feels like a Kana thing. Because I feel like it involves lore. Uh, let's see. We killed the band of. Uh, we killed the bounty that was right here, right? Oh. Um. Well, I think yes, but now these guys are spawned. Guys, don't know if all this works on these flights. Weirdly enough, that did. Be glad to. Uh, but yeah, that the bounty. Yeah, so let's just see what's at actual Durgan's battery. Pretty sure it will have changed dramatically since we were last here. Yes, look at that. There's people here now. Workers. Take all their stuff. You want me to go back up there after nearly losing my leg? You still got it, don't ya? Okay, so there's two named people here. We'll talk to them in a second. Oh, and there's another one over here. that barrel. Give me the barrel. It's full of booze. Shocking. Okay, there's three named people up here. What's your deal, little gar? Well met, stranger. He scratches his head. Wait, I know you. You're the one that cracked this jelly jar in the first place. He laughs and claps you on the back. In that case, well met indeed. And thanks for the job. He leans forward to shake your hand. As he does, you notice he's favoring his right leg, and his left hand is roughly bandaged. Now, I shouldn't talk too long, or I'll get an earful. He glances over his shoulder. What happened to you, Logar? An old bad hip that got worse after a night with Colmar's rot gut. He laughs, but he's wincing, too. It'll heal. Just gotta fix this place up before anything else falls apart. Okay. What's up with you guys? The back of the Orland's head is a patchwork of singed green-brown fur and dark scar-rippled flesh. She notices you and jumps back a foot. One of her staring eyes is gold and the other is hazel. She flicks her left ear, which is little more than a nub on her skull. At last, she relaxes. I think we found Horavius' mom. 
Okay, Aider. Ha! <laughs> Took you for one of them red sarens. Then I saw you had all your teeth. Ha ha ha! She's shouting at you, but a friendly smile warms her face. She smells of sulfur and smoke. Um. Well, hi, I'm Sea Lord Jack. Hang on, gotta talk into my good ear. She yells even louder, swiveling a hairless but whole ear toward you. Now, what was. Say, ain't I seen you somewhere? She scratches a bald patch on her cheek. <laughs> Your mother has. No, I got it. You're the one who got us into this place. She thumps the wall with her fist. Yes, that's correct. Yes, and you fired up the White Forge. Wonder glimmers in her eyes. Must have been a real side up close. All that fire. Ugh. Yes, flames everywhere. A rumbling so deep it rattles your bones. Sometimes I stand on the bridge to the mines just to feel the heat. She trembles with feverish enthusiasm. Lady, you've already been hideously burned. Okay? Ugh, I keep wanting to see the forge for myself, but the blacksmiths won't let me near it. Don't know why. Oh yeah, can't imagine why. She scratches her arm. A clump of burnt hair falls to the snow. So what you doing out here? Oh, uh, you know, clearing tunnels, blowing old barricades, just... Tidying up! She grins, showing all of her teeth. But soon, I've got to start testing the cannons. Her voice drops to a whisper, at least her closest approximation of one. She cl clasps her hands together and looks up at the high tower with nearly religious reverence. Is about the iron flail? We held them off a few weeks ago, but they didn't run far. Set up a fort in the woods, and I hear they're working on some really fantastic siege weapons. Her eyes glow. Surely these walls can protect you, they've held for centuries. I don't know. Something tore through that place a long time ago. She jerks her thumb toward the double doors and gives you a meaningful look. That is true. Anyway, we can stop them. She rubs her hands together. Once we have the heavy cannons, that is. I've heard they could hit a target over five miles away. That is a ridiculous range for a cannon of this tech. Okay. Oh, I'd give my other ear to see that. Her expression melts into bliss. This was the problem with them. They're all the way up there. She points up at a tower that punches through the snow... Bleared? Snow bleared clouds? Is that a word? Hold on. Bleared. Archaic. Make dim. Blur. Okay. Never heard that one before. I sent a crew to the tower, but they came back complaining about Skuldrak and the other nasties. Nearly took Kolmar's leg off. Oh, full of stuff. I can handle. I can help with that. Skuldrak did. I mean, she blinks quickly. Well, I can look into it. That'd be a big help. I'd hate to let those beauties go to rust up there. She twitches and fidgets like a drunk, envisioning a tipple. And anything you find up there is yours. Batteries full of treasures, and the West Tower has hardly been explored. Head through the door and up the stairs. That'll get you to that rampart. She points up at the snow-dusted walkway. Yeah, Kulmar cleared the rubble before he took to getting himself conveniently injured. You should be able to work your way up to the cannons from there. Meantime, I'll check on our black powder stock. She gives you a smile full of jagged teeth. I don't know if this is the person that should be in charge of the cannons. But I guarantee she'll get them working, so maybe she is. Alright, well, cannons at the top of the west tower. That's up there. Leave the axis inside. Um, alright, well, let's see what's inside now. I assume it's changed quite a bit. Did I just get an achievement? Is it every map? I've visited this before. And there's more maps that I haven't visited that's broken or something. This statue of Abaddon is mottled and tarnished, but each bolt and rivet appears crafted with meticulous detail. No, no it's not the ancient person here this. anymore. Really? Huh. I wonder if this was here before and I just missed it. Probably. It is a tomb. Okay, that'll be the way up to the tower. Let me see what else is around. Large streaked pots and dirty cups are stacked next to a note. I cook, you wash. You know what? That's valid. She's 
assume is that a quick way down to the forge? It looks like they're doing a pretty good job of restoring the place. Wheels and levers from mine carts lay scattered. Black powder, handle with care. Noted. Incense ash and rusted metal tokens. Black powder, handle with care. Oh boy, more booze. No shortage of that, huh? And runes. Nobody cares if I just take everything in here. So that's nice. Heavy stones block the hall. Interesting, I could get through there before, but apparently not now. Why is this locked? If you say so. Got it done. This is the armory. Ah yes, do not remove any equipment from the armory without permission from Arms Ward Maroon or Captain Gregor. I'm pretty sure that's so. old. Did I just not find Got this room done. the previous time I came through here? and a duelist's hat. Maybe I just missed this on my previous time. If you say so. That'll do. Okay, yes, yeah, so there's nothing too exciting in here now, but uh, they've certainly made a go of it. This cot smells smoky. It's stained with black powder and ash. Under the pillow are a child's crude charcoal drawings. Maybe stones block all. Yeah, they've blocked a lot of stuff off because it collapses. If you say so. That'll do. Fine stiletto, scroll, potion, affirmations. This heavy iron key survived the years intact and free of rust. That was the way into the armory. Maybe that wasn't accessible before. Warm drippings simmer at the bottom of this pot. It's a corbel. This dwarf gives you a quick nod as he smears the grease and soot from his fingers on his apron. A copper chain dangling from his ears sparkles red in the firelight. I know who you are. Wouldn't be in this place if it weren't for you. He rubs the chain on his ear, flashing a half-smile. What can I do for you? What is it you do here? I'm running the excavation of the lower levels and everything else around here. Supplies, the kitchen, quarters. When you need something, you come to me. Can I see the stores? Let's get to it. Okay, okay, he's just a merchant. He's got exceptional war hammers and armor. Alright, so that's it for this level, it looks like. Nothing too fancy, but uh, they're doing a good job of restoring it. And I guess this is the access to the White Forge now. Since I can't get through the uh, middle level that existed before. Yep, seems like it. Yeah, oh, interesting. I can't go back into the most of the foundry level either. Heavy stones block the hall. Big time collapse they had, huh? But here's the White Forge proper. If you say so. Got it done. Well, don't mind if I just take everything that isn't nailed down. Meals and levers from minecarts lay scattered. changed other than this uh, stuff being around. Nobody down here, so it's just a matter of... Yeah, I can work the White Forge down here. I guess I should refine all my uh, iron ingots, huh? Well, I probably won't do any actual crafting, but yay. We need to go up to the west tower. Because apparently there's some cannons we need to get operational. Oh, 
missed this one before. Some cog wheels and some workers and I guess this west tower. Yeah. I will push the monsters out of the tower. Don't worry about it, guys. It's in here. That'll do. A flame blade. And a forge guardian. Oh. Oh, several forge guardians and flame blights and magma blights. That could be a problem. Well, not that big a problem, but uh let's deliver a couple blasts of chain lightning. <laughs> Do you have some per encounter abilities? Yeah, let's do this. And you. Do this one. Devil of Karak is not very durable. I mean, as you would expect, but. Still not ideal. chance, yeah. On the bright side, we need to cause this uh, 15 times to unlock the next level. We're actually close now, so. I'm here. That helped a lot as far as that goes. Rock. I'm right here. And iron. I'm here. There is a very limited supply, but I don't even really know what you do with it, because I don't do very much crafting in these games, Certainly. really. I don't have to. There's three ways out of this? No, it's just that there's a room here, but I don't see a way to get into it. But I can't exit that way or this way. This way first, I guess. And it's full of skull tracks. I could have possibly seen that coming. Let me just hit him with a fireball or two. Hmm. Yeah, they're immune to sickness. So probably done not that. Someone down, and 
you're stuck. Never mind. Well, you're stuck. Uh, Once. This just uh, connects back to here, so that's simple enough. And more Sculptor. Bunch more Sculptor. Place is pretty infested, huh? Artillery lift will be closed until further notice. The cogs are rusting, and any failure in the mechanism could be catastrophic. Ocean Master Andren is looking into patinating the cogs to make them weatherproof. The map shows the peaks and passes surrounding Durgan's battery. Faded red circles mark Certainly. choke points. Okay, so I can't use the elevator. What a shame. Okay, this one is full of spiders. Get in there, deal with the spiders. dealt with. I'd be glad to. On the treatment and preservation of cannons. This page seems to be from some larger text. We now have a treatment to prevent our prized cannons from rusting outside. Ocean Master Andron developed a solution that seals the metal, protecting it from cold air. We've transformed the old armory into a patination chamber where we can heat the solution into a gas. As the gas fuses the chamber, it will build up a hard coating on the cannons. After a few weeks, the cannons will be ready for the elements. However, we must be careful around the solution. One of Andren's assistants scalded her throat just from breathing too close to the stuff. The rest of the manuscript has fallen apart over time. Unfortunate. Okay, key to the cannon range. Under layer 
players. For us, the Iron Key bears the small inscription Cannon Range on the side. Here, a pretty high level tomb, although not as high level as we are, but. Okay, so that's this portion explored. Now we go in here. Know what I love about travel? Learning new things about myself. Like my fear of heights. Oh, is this the, um, elevator? But it said it was out of service. The chain is so rusted it barely moves. Oh yes, we need to prepare the artillery lift. I see. Hmm. This slot looks like it's missing a lever. A pry bar would do. Gearbox looks strangely empty, like it's missing a cog. On closer inspection, you see a thin layer of yellow slime coating the gearbox. Okay, I mean, I can put a pry bar into here, that's fine. A little maneuvering, it clicks into place. But it's not gonna do anything until I fix this gearbox. So we need a gear of some kind, I guess. find that further in here somewhere. Still hasn't taken any damage. Can't use his abilities. Skull tracks. Just dominated this young skull track. It'll be good to rest. There we are. Oh, good. And this is now uh, achieved its max level. Um, I don't remember how much of this. Let's just read the whole thing. I don't remember how much of it we'd unlocked. The blue stone scepter is remarkable in that it's been shaped from a single sapphire. Its only other component is its grip made of silver bands. In gear, the most famous scepter in all in Adir and perhaps all of Eora is held jointly by the Mequin and Farconing as a symbol of royal authority and is said to carry the souls of early chieftains in its Adra head. Though traditionally thought of as symbolic, there have been a few notable times in history when it was put to practical use. In one such instance, Mequin Elea I had her claim to the throne challenged by an older half-sister, claiming to be a legitimate heir. Elea invited her to court so that people might hear her words with their own ears and judge for themselves. The woman spoke at length and showed a number of sworn documents to those present at court. Elea summoned her to the throne and told her that if the chieftains of Ingir judged her worthy, the Mequin would abdicate. The woman approached. Elea was told to bow her head, to receive the kiss of Ingir, she did so and was quickly felled by a barrage of savage blows from the Mequin. It was the last time her authority was challenged during her reign. In attendance at court that night was Tyrick III, a Grif Palatine. Grif Palatine. So impressed was Tyrick at the many uses of Ingir that he had an artisan craft him a scepter of his own. He was careful to request that it differ completely in appearance from Ingir, lest he draw the attention and ire of the Mequin. 
The Geared Hominish Tenes does not contain the souls of the Grafe's bloodline. It does tend to project the authority of the wielder, as the original owner, in owner intended. So, it's accurate 6, so 30% damage plus accuracy, and it's got plus 20% raw damage, and the 10% chance to cast Dominate, and plus 3 Resolve. I'm not sure what we just gained. I think maybe we gained this? What does this do? Once per encounter. Um, I can cast this, which stuns for 6 seconds, does damage, some of it raw. Okay. Stunning is pretty good. Stunning is actually very good, to be fair. It works. Thanks for watching, adventurers. New parts will be up every other day, or you can watch live on Twitch. If you did enjoy the video, consider leaving a like or subscribing. Have a nice day, adventurers. This is Sea Lord Janda, signing off.